Welcome to the very first uh, module for mapping fundamentals. So we are going to start with objectives one and two. These are very, um, very basic skill sets, I guess would be what we would say. Um, mapping fundamentals requires you to work in industry. It requires you to, or mapping in general geomatics. You have to work in industry. You're going to be applying fundamental skills. We need some like real skills, real tangible skills that, um, that are soft skills. And so sometimes if you get sent off to a a training session or you get sent off to some sort of course or maybe they want you to expand and do a, like a credential like go back to university maybe you want to become an engineer these types of skills are going to be very important so the whole module itself is really those like starter skill sets everything from learning how to learn to organizing your day to uh, how do how do you really like get through the day and get through training and how do you choose training etc so a lot these first couple modules that we're going to be discussing are we're going to have a some time and on um on the discussion board so i do want you guys to be referring to the discussion board and working in your groups because there's all all group discussions that are going on through there so make sure you take some time to go there and check it out so um, I'm just going to go through the PowerPoints. That, that's my goal with this. You're going to see that there's going to be several different um, videos that I create, and a lot of them will be more of the hands-on stuff. So the separate ones are going to be like, okay, here's hands-on stuff, maybe extra calculations for you to watch. But the, the purpose of these videos that I'm doing for um, with the PowerPoints and the objectives is really to get you the information and the theory side of it and then we'll move into like more activities and, and such through throughout so because you, we're not going to be doing this all together in the classroom and we're doing this all online i'm just giving you that information through these powerpoints so my first objective is discussing methods for taking notes in training situations I guarantee you that when you go out in industry, they are going to ask you to go to training, whether that be training on equipment or be um, safety training, or it could be more um, information that you are going for. So, um, so the first thing you want to do is take notes. So you need to be actively listening to your teacher. First of all, you need to that that that's what taking notes is. Um, it shows that you are listening to your teacher, whoever, or your trainer. It requires you to think during the class while you're writing down information. Instead of sitting there and zoning out and just being like, yeah, I'll get it later, you actually have to think about what the teacher's saying, what the teacher's writing down, and everything like that. Then you're going to be connecting your ideas to your own experiences and knowledge. Y you each come from a very unique background and a very unique experience. And so maybe some of the information they're talking about will actually relate and ring a bell. And then you'll be like, oh, I have a light bulb go off and I need to, and I can apply that in this way. So it also, we also use it to review. So there's lots of um, stuff we can do with that. So that's why we take notes. There are five methods that I go that I teach in this class that are for taking notes, and you're going to spend a lot more time um, in your groups examining these. So I uh, keep that in mind. So there, the five of them are the Cornell method, the method mapping method, outlining method, charting method, and the sentence method. None of these are writing down exactly what the teacher says and writes on the board. None of them say that. So there's three sections um, to the Cornell method. You separate up your page. Um, and you do class notes um, during the, so you do the actual class notes for like during the class notes, and that's just like writing things in your own words. There's cues, cues for vocabulary or other details is in the second area, and then there's a summary at the end. Then we have a mapping method, which the mapping method starts out with a main point and draws branches to the different things. These are like really cool maps and they're very good visuals to see like, okay, here's the center idea. And then there's the, the subtopics and then all the data around it. The outlining method is a, for you sequential thinkers who like everything with like main points and then subtopics and titles and like just going down the line from that. A lot of people tend to go to the outlining method um, in classes, especially if there's a lot of theory in them. 
And then there's the charting method. So you've set up a table and you have topic titles as column headings and you just make points below and in, in a table. And then there's the sentence method where you just write sentences for each point. So this web page is where you're going to find all of that, um, all that information. And so, and you'll find their examples and everything in here. So if you go there, please check that out. You'll see the, the different ways to examine it. Then objective 1.2 is identifying study methods for learning different types of materials. So again, this is a just a basic method. That, of course, this one has very, very many, so many different ways to do this. So you need to change the, we have to study because we need to change the way our brain remembers information so that it is more efficient. So you'll often see people when they're talking that they're going to raise their eyes up because they're trying to remember and pull that information forward. And that, for some reason, that's what our body does and allows us to pull memory. So our brain retrieves information, so we need to change the way that it does retrieve that and then we can also use it. So not so much that it just recalls it, but it also uses it. So we need to change the way that the neural networks are in our brain. Um, and sometimes you need to maybe change the way you study to improve the efficiency of how you study and like and of your, your study habits. Because one way that you did before may be too time consuming because we do have a lot more information in college than that we have to remember. So just some um, basic study tips. First of all, challenge yourself. Don't be like, okay, I know this information, so I'm gonna keep reviewing it. Move on to the stuff you don't know and challenge yourself with that. Also, space out your study sessions. Every day you should be studying. You should sit down and study and not cramming overnight. Don't cram. That's like the worst thing you can do is like, okay, I'm gonna start studying at nine o'clock the night before my 8 a.m. exam, and I'm just gonna study all night. You'll never remember anything that way. Mix up your subjects. So you, again, you have to train your brain to remember these things, right? So we're trying to like change the, like the actual physiological component of our brain. So if you can go from one subject, spend a, a half hour or hour on one, switch to another and then go back, that is actually like training your brain to be more efficient at remembering that information. And then keep testing yourself regularly. Every day, sit down and ask yourself, what did I learn? What do I know, etc. So there's the formula for great studying. Again, it comes from this, this web page here, so you can go to that and check it out. Um, you'll actually see this pop up as I go all the way through the entire semester because I want you guys to, to go to it and remember it and go back to it and continue. And this is how you're gonna remember this information. So um, before class, do the readings. I give you a list of readings. Before you come and even sit down in these, um, in, in my videos, you should be doing the readings before you even come. Because once I start talking, then you might zone out or do something different. But make sure that you check that you are, aren't skimming the readings without comprehending. So you may have to like cover it over and say, what did I just learn in that paragraph? And do it again. Um, read small sections at a time, right? So don't read, you know, 46 pages all at once. Read, you know, five pages, make sure you know it, understand it, and then carry on. Test yourself as you go, that's what I'm saying, and then take notes of what you were reading. Write it down. There's nothing more important than actually remembering what you're doing. <laughs> um, sometimes people highlight, and that's fine. You can definitely highlight, um, but make sure that you, you actually use your hand to write down something about that. Then during class, go to class or listen to these lectures because there's obviously no class at this time. But create your notes, don't take notes. Okay, so taking notes just means you're mindlessly writing down letters that the instructor has given you. And for example, right now, you guys have all these PowerPoints in front of you as you're watching me talk, um, and you're not really taking notes. How many of you are actually writing down something that I am saying? So make sure that you, you do that, right? And write it in your own words. Um, then after class, write summaries or review your notes in different ways. So, you know, depending on the, the note-taking method you've done, it allows you to to go back and read and, and some of them have write a summary so write a summary it's really important that you do that because that's going to help you retain that information then when you're preparing for exams breathe use stress reduction techniques and find focus techniques everybody's different and then we're going to spend some time in the discussions talking about that and then during exams skim the exam first uh, now because it's online 
go down as much of that page as you possibly can. Then you write the exam, then go back to any questions that you don't know or write the exams the exam questions that you know. But don't rush. Check over your exam. Make sure that you've read the questions fully and you've answered it fully. You might have to reverse engineer it, right? So if there's something that you weren't quite sure about um, and you made a note that I should go back to that question, go back to it and just reverse engineer from your question, your answer. Does it make sense? Um, so that you can do that during an exam. You, I give you lots of time so you don't need to rush through it. And then you need to, another great thing to do is create habits. You need to practice it. You need to go over, over, and over again. So in the discussion, we will be just talking about your techniques of what you do, perhaps what you do for relaxation techniques, or what do you do for during class, or what do you do but before class or after class. So we'll be talking about that in the discussion. And then our next video, we'll be getting into Objectives 1.3.